Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, mm. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Glory be to God on Amen. high Amen. and on earth, on earth peace, peace. goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God, the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now get really comfortable for the, for the readings. The first reading is from the Book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of the heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked for this. God said to him, because you have asked for this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the understanding of your enemies, sorry, for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. The second lesson for today is a letter from Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind for the spirit 
because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, for who are, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Speak to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Holy and Divine One, both Amma and Abba, I ask you to allow me to speak honestly, clearly, and to exemplify the spirit of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Parables are one of the greatest teaching tools, in my opinion, that Jesus uses. And one of the things I like about them is that they can be read in very many different ways and that each of us may discern something different from them depending on our view, our personalities, our, our, our feelings, our thoughts. They are full of metaphor. 
And in the case of Jesus, for the people he was responding to and teaching, many of them have connection to farming and work that was done during those times by the poor and the outcast people that he dealt with so often. This one's got a theme in it that I've concentrated on a little bit because I think it relates directly to this church. It is never easy at a church when it goes through massive changes. And we are, we are currently doing some of that right now. No one in the church wants to hurt anyone. I certainly don't want to. But after being here a year and a half, it was obvious to me that if we were con con continuing on the path that we were on and not changing the focus of some of the things that we really need to deal with, this church was going to die a slow death. No disrespect to anyone, but we have an elderly church. And in five to 10 years, if we continued the way we were doing things, I would be hesitant to think that we would be able to operate very well. Time marches on. Uh, the pandemic has thrown a whole new monkey wrench into all of that. Some adapt to change better than others, but we have to really realign ourselves, I truly believe, what I call somewhat of back to the basics in that it is easy to get off track in certain areas. It's easy to get stagnant. It's easy to fall into a same old, same old, usually capitalized by, well, we tried that before and it didn't work. Um, but to be very succinct, good shepherd needs to go back strongly. The main teachings that we do are directly from Jesus. And that is being a mission-driven, mission-oriented church. And that stretches across the board of everything that we do. And the theme that I saw, especially directly in a couple of these parables, The mustard seed, how tiny. I remember taking my kids somewhere when we were young and there was two things that they wanted to get and both of them were in incredibly little capsules. One of them was a piece of rice that had writing on it and one of them was a mustard seed. Now I've had bad vision all my life. I've had, I have as much astigmatism as anyone can have. I had the uh, Lasix done, but I, other than that, I started wearing glasses when I was four. And as we all know, as we get older, our eyes usually don't get better. Um, the mustard seed is almost hard to see. And yet that little seed can grow. And as it grows, the birds come and eventually that little seed is a huge tree. Same with the yeast. The amount of yeast that is put into the dough is minuscule. And yet look at the effect the yeast has on that bread. Jesus started out alone. And compared to the rest of the country that he was in, even when he had a full set of disciples, statistically, it was nothing. And 
And Jesus did not set out where he could have. I want thousands of people around me as I go around and teach. I want it to be this way, that way, whatever. No, he did started from small and then look at the way it spread and grew. And that's what I was concerned about with this church more than anything is the growth. Not only aren't we growing, we have started to, unfortunately, through moving and, and people passing away, our numbers are shrinking. We have to go out and find new folks for this church. And we want to bring them in for them knowing we are talking about serving. The number one people we will serve are the ones that are the worst off in society. The number two people we will serve will be the number two worst off people in society. And that is our mission. I may be the guy that upset the apple cart and who knows, in the future, I may be looked upon as a dastardly villain or someone that might have started something new. I don't know. It's not for me to say. It's not for me to care, to be truthful. I believe that God is, is leading me along with the diocese and with people that are here today on this screen that want to do what we're talking about. We want to live we want, to, we want to learn, we want to share, we want to teach, we want to serve. And that will make decisions from everything, from things that we don't even sometimes really want to talk about, to be truthful, budgets and, and pledges and things like that. But it's all part of the same deal. We, and even Jesus knew, are we going to solve hunger from Good Shepherd in the world? Not even close. But can we feed people in the general area? Don Robbins and the sandwich group blew the previous record away with the sandwiches that went last week. So there were enough sandwiches for all those people to have two meals rather than one, back to back two days in a row. Give us this day our daily bread. We will take supplies to the Apache Nation this week. We will not give them everything they need. but we will give them what we have. And I seriously have been thinking about creating a, a cutout figure that we would stand outside the church when we reopen that would be the widow with the mite. That's the kind of thinking We will give everything we have to give. And also, too, I hear so many people say this. Someone came up the other day that isn't even a member of our church, and they gave us four 24-count uh, uh, thing of bottled water and some food. Well, it's not very much. Yes, it is. It's huge. It is huge. And so we want to continue slowly but surely to reform, 
to reignite, to truly have a church that quite frankly will not be perfect, that will not get everything right, that will not have its ups and downs, that will not have its problems, but that the general effort is to follow to the best of our ability the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit guide us through our teachings, through our groups, through every area we have. And I've heard people say to me already too that, well, you know, I'm this age, I'm that age, and there's really not much I can do. Everybody can find something to do. And it may be the size of that mustard seed. And we know what happens with that. We can do this. With God's help, we can do this. And that's not disparaging anybody in the past. That's not criticizing anybody. It's just that sometimes it's got to get dark before the light shines through again. And we are looking for the light of Christ to guide us along the way. We already have many dedicated people working on various ministries that hopefully, well, we, not hopefully, we will do them, but hopefully that sometime in the fall, we'll get that church open again, and that we'll even be able to spend more time together in community, working together. And nothing ever says we are not allowed to have fun while we're doing it and laughs. I don't know about you, but I have found in my life, the other day I took a bag of clothing and shoes and things and um, the gold mine so full, I actually took it to another place because they were really calling for the need for that, especially for men's stuff. And I just think as I put that in the slot and let it slide into that box, I felt good. And God says, you should. And I didn't feel good in an egotistical way. And what I gave might be enough for one or two people. But it's one or two people that got new jeans and some shoes. We will just chip away and chip away and chip away. And we will keep serving and serving. And it's not glamorous. It's like our food bank. Every week, we're calling for donations. But there are people there that really need that food. And there are kids that need those supplies. And that's what I want the heart of all of us to be centered on. And I thank you for attending this morning. As you know, I'm always available to any of you. There will be a e-blast going out tomorrow with a list of various Zoom things that we can do, everything from probably the restarting of the way of love to Bible study, to book study, to a movie study, to a just get it together and rant and rave and vent, to just get together and chat about whatever is on our mind. And so when you get that, if you would not mind answering that something that you would show interest in so that we can get those going. It's, this is the only venue we have right now and we're lucky to have it, fortunate to have it. And so rather than people being able to drift away more and more, we wanna pull everybody back into the best of our ability and offer enough things that are interesting that people will want to do that and share in community, even though we're on a screen. I am so grateful to be here. I love this church and I love you. I wouldn't go anywhere else. There may be a few that would like me to, but that's the way that goes. But I just hope that we can all search our hearts 
and say, you know what, no matter how little it may seem, we can do more. Amen. Let us recite the creed of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Your light of the Son of God Shine on my path that I may see the way wherein you have called me to go. Shine on my path that I may follow thee. Pure mind of the Son of God, come and think your thoughts in me. One thought only would I know, Son of God, you love me so. Pure love of the Son of God, fill my heart that I may show the love you have for all mankind, love that is eternal light. Spirit of the Son of God, live in me that I may do the will of God and be set free to live the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who sets all free, calls to you and calls to me to follow him to the Father's throne, there to dwell for eternity. Thank you, Brita. Holy and Divine One, we come on bended knee for you to hear our supplications. We will respond to each prayer by saying, hear our plea. We pray for all who are suffering from the virus and ask that they be healed. We also pray especially for the elderly and infirm to keep the virus away. Hear our plea. Hear our plea. For all of those who are out of work, help them to have food, water, and shelter. 
We ask for people to think of others first and not only stop hoarding, but to share with others, especially those in real need. Here. Here are, please. We pray for all doctors, nurses, and medical staff who are on the front lines of this. Keep them well. Here are, please. We pray for government to put aside their petty differences and work in unison for the betterment of all people, especially the needy. We pray that we do not give in to fear, but intensify our faith in the one who loves us all. Hear our plea. We pray for tolerance, acceptance, wisdom, and courage as we go through this together. Hear our plea. We pray for all of the sweet souls departed and their families and friends. Hear our plea. We pray that this time is used fruitfully for comfort in solitude, daily prayer, meditation, spiritual rituals, and readings. Here are we. We pray to remember that as followers of Jesus the Christ, our actions need to reflect the spreading of the gospel. Here are we. We pray that we can all strive to work together be more respectful and loving towards one another as we wade through tumultuous times inside our church as well as in the country and the world. Here are we. We offer up these prayers in humility and in reverence for the creator of all. We thank you for all the gifts and grace we receive and ask that we do not take our blessings for granted. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And truly, may the peace of the Lord be always with you, And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. <laughs>